Welcome to our podcast, where we dive into the fascinating world of finance to help you navigate the complexities of money management and achieve your financial goals. In the latest news from the digital currency space, Barry Silbert, a prominent figure and known advocate for cryptocurrencies, has decided to resign from his role as the chairman of Grayscale Investments. This move appears to be a response to the ongoing legal issues faced by the digital currency group, DCG, Grayscale's parent company. Recently DCG has been engulfed in various legal battles and regulatory concerns, leading speculation that Silbert's resignation is an attempt to preserve his reputation. These developments have led to a reshuffling of the board at Grayscale, with Mark Shifke stepping in to fill the void left by Silbert. As the new chairman, Shifke's ability to navigate DCG's legal tribulations and guide the company will be keenly watched. Silbert's departure is quite significant given his influence and his instrumental role in positioning Grayscale as a leading platform in the cryptocurrency investment world. Among various products the company offers, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is notably popular. It is yet to be seen how this leadership transition will impact Grayscale's future operations and strategies, as well as its standing in the crypto investment space. As the crypto landscape continues to evolve rapidly, We aim to keep you abreast with the developments related to DCG's legal issues and Grayscale's leadership changes, and their broader implications in the digital currency industry. Stay tuned for more updates on this story. In the latest report from MarketBeat, Birkenstock Holding PLC, NYSE, Birk, known for its iconic footwear, and TriPoint Homes Incorporated have both received a moderate by average rating from brokerages. Analysts suggest that both these companies carry potential for growth, with Birkenstock standing strong in the footwear market and TriPoint Homes indicating positive prospects in the homebuilding sector. Further, Evans Therapeutics Incorporated, RVNC, has sparked brokers' interest, marking an average target price of $25.33 for the stock. This projection raises the potential for an increase in value, driving investor interest toward this pharmaceutical company. On a different note, there has been a surprising increase in the value of three heavily shorted stocks. This sudden development leads to speculation about the future stability of short squeezes where investors betting against a stock might be compelled to repurchase it, potentially escalating its price. The recent surge in these heavily shorted stocks has prompted questions about the sustainability of the short squeeze practice. Keep following MarketBeat for more updates on these stories, as well as other market news. In the latest news from StockNews.com, we've observed several rating changes among various companies. Builders' first source, NYSE, BLDR, has been upgraded to buy, indicating a likelihood of positive future developments within the company. Similarly, Gravity, Nasdaq, GRVY, has experienced an upgrade to strong buy, an encouraging sign suggesting that the company's prospects have significantly improved. However, the news isn't all optimistic as Exelon, Nasdaq, EXC, has been downgraded to sell by StockNews.com. This move, coupled with a subsequent downgrading to the same level, suggests ongoing challenges within the company, warranting potential caution for investors. In terms of newly initiated coverage, StockNews.com has given Voxeljet, NYSE, Jet, a hold rating, indicating neutral prospects. Meanwhile, Verizon Communications experienced a downgrade from buy to hold, leading investors to reassess the company's strength. Lastly, we have Alpha and Omega Semiconductor receiving an upgrade to hold. While this signifies a positive shift, the hold rating still necessitates caution and recommended further evaluation. That concludes the recent news from StockNews.com. Stay alert for our future updates and analyzes. After a decade-long wait since the infamous shutdown of Mt. Gox, the once-dominant Bitcoin exchange, the long-awaited moment has finally arrived for creditors. They are now starting to receive partial repayments of locked-up funds in Japanese yen, marking a significant milestone in the ongoing saga of Mt. Gox's collapse. While this news brings a glimmer of hope to those who suffered massive losses, it's important to underscore that the repayments are partial and will not cover the creditors' full losses. The repayments signify the end of an extended period filled with legal battles, complex investigations, and the frustrations of multifaceted financial transactions following the abrupt closure of the exchange in 2014. This also highlights the extent of the delays in seeking compensation. Interestingly, The repayments have sparked concern among Bitcoin traders, as the collapse of Mt. Gox, once the largest Bitcoin exchange globally, severely impacted the cryptocurrency market. The traders are now closely observing the potential repercussions of the repayments on Bitcoin's value and market dynamics due to their being made in Japanese yen. Although the commencement of repayments brings a sense of closure for the creditors of Mt. Gox, it is a stark reminder of the volatility and challenges inherent in the cryptocurrency industry. As the recovery process progresses, 
the impact of this development on the wider Bitcoin community and the future of Mt. Gox remains to be seen. In the latest roundup of Nasdaq news, we've observed a variety of company developments and evaluations. Demonstrating positive investor sentiment, Lanza Tech Global, Nasdaq, LNZA, experienced a 4.9% increase in its share value. Similarly, Diamond Heads, Nasdaq DHHC stock price surged by 7.9% during midday trading, indicative of positive market sentiment or other investor confidence boosting factors. On the commentary front, both Platica Holding Corporation and Generation Bio Company received hold ratings from analysts, suggesting a lack of strong sentiment either way and a cautious stance towards future prospects. Exciting news for investors, the Western Asset Short Duration Income ETF declared a dividend of $0.09, cent, offering a return on the investment. Additionally, strategy shares Nasdaq 7 Handle ETF witnessed a high trading volume, indicating increased interest and activity in this particular ETF. Lastly, showcasing potential upward trend in their respective stocks, both Globus Maritime and Hooker Furnishings saw their stocks cross above their 200-day moving averages. For Globus Maritime, the average currently stands at $1.46. In summarizing, Platica Holding Corporation's hold rating deserves a repetition, underlining the wait and see approach adopted by analysts. That concludes the recent news from the Nasdaq. Stay connected for more regular updates and analysis. Thank you for joining us today to discuss the intricate world of finance and empowering individuals with the knowledge and tools to navigate the financial landscape successfully.